to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ and when they saw Jesus walking on the sea, supposing He was a ghost, they cried out. Mark chapter 6, verse number 49. Welcome to our special study series in which we are examining some rather unique and special studies that maybe we don't often hear a lot about. In our previous lessons, we've discussed the subject of angels and the subject of demons and what the Bible has to say on those interesting subjects. Today we think about what the scripture has to say about the subject of ghosts or the paranormal. As always today's lesson is being brought to you by members of the Church of Christ worldwide. Those who are members of the Church of Christ would love for you to stop by and visit their services. If you've got a Bible question or maybe you'd like to study the Scripture more, they'd love to sit down and discuss God's Word with you at any time. At the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to study with you as well and get to know you better. If you've got a, a Bible question or you can access our website, thegospelofchrist.com through the internet, we'd love for you to stop by and check out our material. All our information, including our CDs and DVDs and our online lessons, is available free of charge from that website address. And if you'd like to study better, please let us know. We'd love to study with you or put you in contact with members of the Lord's Church in your area who'd love to sit down and discuss God's Word further. What do we know about the subject of ghosts? There's a lot of hysteria about this idea in our world today. From the time that the movie Ghostbusters came out to today where we've got ghost hunters and paranormal societies and all this interest in the subject of ghosts. What does the Bible actually teach on this subject? Am I going to see some disembodied spirit in some white misty form? Do I need to worry about being haunted in the deep dark of the night? Are there haunted houses and, and ghosts and evil spirits that are actually out to get us today? Well, as you can imagine, that makes for pretty interesting books and movies and documentaries, but what does the Scripture actually teach? Do ghosts exist today? Have people really seen ghosts, and are those sightings founded on the Scriptures and the Word of God? As we begin, let's realize that there are two places of existence that we can think of. First, there is the physical, material, touchable, tangible world. Genesis 1-1 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 2 verse 7 the Lord God created man at the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. And so we have the, the physical, the touchable, the material, tangible world in which we live, and yet we cannot deny, based on the scriptures, that there is also a spirit world. There is a place where people's spirits, once they leave this physical life, do reside. Let me illustrate. First Peter chapter 3 Verse number 19 says this, By whom also he, Jesus, went and preached to the spirits in prison. There were spirits who were in existence in some other location beyond this earth life. The Bible teaches in Luke 16, verses 19 through 31, that when both the rich man and Lazarus died, they went to that spirit place that we know of as the Hadean realm. On the Hadean realm, or in the Hadean realm, there was torment, where the rich man was, and there was paradise, where Lazarus was. And so, yes, there is a, another place of existence, the Hadean realm, where the spirits exist. 
But for our discussion today, we want to consider, are there ghosts, spirits, who are coming back today to haunt, to talk to, and to create havoc on this physical, touchable world in which we live in today? Well, we ask first of all, what exactly do we mean by the word ghost? When someone says, I saw a ghost, or do you believe in ghosts? What exactly are we talking about? Well, Webster defines it this way. A ghost is defined as a disembodied soul or spirit, especially the soul of a dead person believed to be an inhabitant of the unseen world or to appear in the likeness of body living forms. So talk about a ghost, oftentimes people will say, well, you know, some tragic event happened in this house 100, 200 years ago, and their spirit is still trapped here, and they're appearing in body form. We're talking about the soul of a dead person, they would say. Maybe a, a disenspirit, disembodied spirit who's still existing. That's kind of what we mean when we talk about the idea of a ghost. You know, when we think about this, we do find the word ghost mentioned in the Bible on several occasions. In fact, during the time of Jesus, People had the idea, at least did believe in, ghosts. Listen to Matthew chapter 14, verses 25 through 27. The scripture records, Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out with fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. Same event occurs in Mark chapter 6, verse 49. They see Christ walking on the sea, great miracle that He performed. They don't know how a human being could do that, and so the only other conclusion they can draw is this figment of their imagination, it's a ghost. And so they thought that might be the case, and of course Jesus says, it's not a ghost, it's me, don't be afraid, be of good cheer. They did believe at that time in spirits who came back to this world. The Greek word used here in this context, Mark chapter 6 and Matthew 14, is not the word for spirit, which is the Greek word pneuma, it's actually phantasma which is the word for ghost. The King James and New King James will translate that. It's from the word that our English word phantom originates. And so they didn't know what it was. They said, it's a ghost. It's a phantom. We don't know what it is, but it's surely not a person. Jesus said in Luke chapter 24, verse number 39, when he came back from the grave, when he was resurrected, Jesus said, look at my hands and my feet. It, it is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And so here we see an example of Jesus using this to show at the resurrection. He wasn't a ghost. He was actually there in spirit form. And so the idea of a phantom, Jesus did away with that when he said, I'm not a phantom. I'm a spirit. I, I, I've come back from the grave. You can see in my hands and my feet the marks that were made by the cross. And so there was some belief in Jesus' day about the idea of ghost. But let's think about this. What does the Bible actually say on the subject of ghosts and their existence? We know that ghosts, or at least spirits, existed in the Bible on at least one occasion. Let me illustrate. 1 Samuel 28. We've got Saul and Samuel there, and, and Saul is struggling with his kingdom. He's having a lot of problems, and so in a desperate attempt, he goes to what we know of as the witch in Endor. She calls up from the grave uh, Samuel, Samuel's spirit, and that spirit returns. And you remember the context when Saul sees it, he's afraid. Even he was surprised that it actually happened, and yet Samuel's spirit did come back and communicate with Saul on that occasion. But as we think about that occasion, that was indeed a, a special scenario. 
in which God allowed that to happen so that information could be given to, to Saul so that he would realize the sinfulness of what he had done and for that to be the working of God's ultimate plan. And so we do know that it occurred in one occasion, one occasion in Scripture. But you know, as we think about ghosts, there's also a lot of other ideas that are uniquely associated with this. For example, what does the Bible say on the subject of witches? We think of ghosts and goblins and ghouls. We think of, of witches as well. Does the Bible have anything to say on the subject of witches or warlocks? It indeed does. Notice Exodus chapter 22, verse number 18. You shall not permit a sorceress, some versions will say, a witch to live. How did God look at people who tried to delve into or tried to trick others with those kind of things? God said, don't let them live. God was not at all pleased with that type of action or lifestyle. Let me give you another example. Notice, if you would, Deuteronomy chapter 18. Verses 10 through 12. The scripture says, There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. And so, soothsayers, spiritists, what we think of as black magic, maybe. How did God feel about that? God said, don't let them live among you. God didn't want that to happen. Not that they could necessarily do it, but those who tried to, those who might have tricked people, those who gave into those things, rather than putting their faith in God, God said, you've got to drive those people out from among you. Well, what about things like sorcerers or mediums or spiritists, as we might know them today? Those who want to try to communicate with the dead or bring certain spells on other people. What does the Scripture say on subjects like unto these? Again, the Bible is very clear in addressing these issues in Leviticus chapter 19 verse 31 and Leviticus chapter 20 verse 27 God again condemned such action. Deuteronomy 18 verse 11 those who conjure spells or those who bring omens God said don't let them live among you and so everywhere we see in the Bible these type of actions are not acceptable and pleasing to the Father. Now, as we speak about the subject of ghost, we know that there's also, and we mentioned this just a little in our lesson before or in great detail in some areas, but we also want to mention it because it's so related to our subject at hand. Oftentimes when people think about ghosts and ghouls and witches, the idea of demons comes in as well. Now, we know that demon possession and their existence was indeed found in the New Testament. We, we, we see today movies like Poltergeist where the little girl is sitting in front of the TV with a static and her hands on the TV and supposedly something's going to come out and possess her. Well, is that really going on today? Let's think about what happened in the New Testament. In Mark chapter 5, we know that there were a host of demons who actually possessed a man, legion or the demoniac, and they caused him to do horrible things, cut himself, run naked, uh, live in the mountains, had great strength, and yet he was pretty much out of his mind in a lot of ways. Demons possessed men at times in the Bible. Mark chapter 9, we find an example of a man who was controlled by a demon. But it wasn't just limited to men. Luke chapter 8 verse 2, there was a woman who was possessed as well with demons. But it wasn't just limited to adults. There were children in the Bible who did have demon possession as well. Let me illustrate. Notice Mark chapter 7, verse number 30. And when she had come to her house, she found the demon gone out and her daughter 
lying on the bed. And so here we see a case where Jesus actually cast the demon out. That demon was in some ways affecting that child. And so yes, demon possession did exist in the New Testament age. But what about today? Am I going to be living in fear of some demon possessing me and overtaking my body? Again, we mentioned it in the previous lesson, but we want to drive the point home that demon possession was for the first century and the Bible teaches that's ended. Notice Zechariah chapter 13 verses 1 and 2. The scripture records, In that day a fountain shall be opened for the house of David and for the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. It shall be in that day, says the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols from the land. They shall no longer be remembered. I will also cause the prophets, notice this, and the unclean spirit to depart from the land. Now, question. In the context, what time period is being spoken of? Well, here's the context. In that day, God says a fountain will be opened in Jerusalem for sin and uncleanness. Now, what is that time period? Well, we know that's when Jesus and the gospel were preached. John 19, 34, when the soldier pierced the side of Jesus, that fountain was opened and forthwith came blood and water. And on that great day of Pentecost, when they realized they had killed their Messiah, they cried out, they were cut to the hearts, and they cried out, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And the clarion answer was, Repent and be baptized, watch this now, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so, in context, the time period is when the Gospels preached, the lifetime of Jesus, that first century era. But now notice this also. In that same day, God would cut off idols from the land. History records after Babylonian captivity and during the time of Jesus, the Israelites no longer gave in to idols. Prophets would cease to be. 1 Corinthians 13 verses 8 through 10 tells us that as the Bible is being recorded, when that which is perfect has come, that which is in part. Prophecy, miraculous knowledge, and those things would cease. But now don't miss this as well and unclean spirits. Demon and unclean spirit are used synonymously in the New Testament. Unclean spirits will depart from the land. Friend, here's what we clearly learn. When the gospel was preached during the first century, when that fountain was opened, unclean spirits began to cease to exist. And by the end of the first century, that's a phenomenon that was done away with. Jesus had power over demons. God allowed that to occur to show the power of His Son, but the Bible clearly teaches unclean spirits departed from the land and they're no longer existing or haunting us today. And so do I need to be afraid of, of demons and things of that nature? Absolutely not. Now, let's address probably the question that we all think about and are looking for a Bible answer on. Do ghosts exist today? Again, there's no denying that there was a belief about them in Jesus' day. There's no denying that spirits did come back in the Old Testament at least on one occasion. But what about today? What does the Bible say about ghosts and their existence for us? Here's what the scripture records. The Bible teaches that the dead, we're talking about spirits in the Hadean realm, are not aware of earth life and the events that are going on. Notice in your Bible, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses 5 and 6. The scripture records in this context, For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. They have no reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love, their hatred, their envy has now perished. Nevermore will they have a share in anything done under the sun. The dead. Who are we talking about? Spirits. They don't know what's going on here. They don't have a share in that. They don't partake in it. They don't come back and interact in the events from day to day and life to life. Their life under the sun, earth life, is over. And they're not going to come back and interact with us today. Here's what else the Bible says. The Bible teaches that the dead are not going to rise and live and haunt people now. Isaiah 26 
I want you to notice what verse 14 says. The Bible records of the dead, they are dead, they will not live, they are deceased, they will not rise, therefore you have punished and destroyed them and made all their memory to perish. What do we know? They're dead, they'll not live. They're deceased, they'll not rise, they're, they're not going to come back and live, they're not going to come back and haunt, they're not going to hang around and bring havoc and uh, do all these things that people make up today. That's not what the Bible teaches on the subject of ghosts. Here's what we know. The dead do not. Listen carefully now. We lo there's a whole lot said about haunted houses today, but here's what you can know. The Bible says the dead do not rise up, nor do they go to their houses anymore. Listen to Job chapter 7, verses 8 through 10. The eye of him who sees me will see me no more. While your eyes are upon me, I shall no longer be. As the cloud disappears and vanishes, watch this now, so is he who goes down to the grave, does not come up. He shall never return to his house, nor his place, nor shall his place know him anymore. What, what did Job say? The dead go down to the grave. They don't come back, back up out of that. They don't go to their house anymore. Wait a minute now, Job. Are you saying when dead people leave this life, they don't come back and live in their houses anymore? Friend, that's exactly what the Scripture is recording. And so, what about all this hysteria about haunted houses and these places where tragic events happen and all these disembodied spirits are there? Friend, we just don't find biblical support for those ideas. Here's what we do find. The Bible records that after one leaves this life, his spirit returns back to God. Listen to Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse number 7. The Bible says, Then the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. What happens to spirits? Do they just linger around? Are they stuck in some in-between? No, they return to God who gave them. They're under God's authority, God's control, and God has told us they're not coming back, they're not participating in these events, and they're not going back to their houses. And so we can know, while there's a lot of hoopla, while there's a lot of hysteria, while there's a lot of interest and excitement in this idea, friend, it's just not based on Scripture and biblical ideas. Here's what we know for sure. In Luke chapter 16, we get a good scenario of exactly what happens. You remember the story, Lazarus and the rich man? Their fates were changed on the other side. Lazarus awoke in paradise. He was in Abraham's bosom. And the rich man, he awoke in torment so bad that he wanted just one drop of water to cool his tongue. He said, I'm tormented in these flames. And, and then he wanted, he still got the wrong mindset. He wants the rich man to come and serve him. Can't do that. He wants somebody to go back from the grave. Listen now. He wants a spirit to go back from the grave and warn his five brothers. What, what did Abraham say? It's not possible. Why? There's a great gulf. You can't cross over, you can't go back. Friend, what do I know about spirits interacting today? From that example, I learned that you can't go back. You can't cross over. It's not possible. There is a separation, a chasm, a divide in the spirit world that separates them from us. Now, does that mean today then that there is nothing for us to be afraid of? Oh, there's something that I need to fear greatly. There is something in the spirit world that I need to fear greatly. It's not a hysteria that is not founded on Scripture. We're talking about the devil. Friend, I'm not afraid of ghosts. I'm not looking for what's that bump in the dark of the night or is something haunting me or demons going to possess me. No, not in that sense. But I need to be alert and I need to be aware. And I need to be fearful that there is an enemy. It's the devil. He's working today through my own desires and lust and your own desires and lust to cause us to be lost. And I desperately need to fear him. Is he real? You bet he is. The Bible says be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Is he evil? 
He absolutely is. Jesus said to Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you, that he may sift you as wheat, but I've prayed for you. Luke 22, 31. He's real. He's evil. He wants you to go to hell. And every day, he is aggressively seeking people to be lost. There was a council before the Almighty in Job chapter 1. Sons of God came and the devil came. And God said to Satan, where have you been? And he said, I've been going to and fro, back and forth on the earth. Well, what was he doing? By the next question we learn, have you considered my servant Job? He was aggressively going back and forth looking for people to tempt by their own passions, desires, and lust and calls to be lost. Now, here's the good news in all this though. Has the devil been defeated? Oh, you bet he has. Hebrews 2 and verse 14, the scripture records of Christ, He, through death, overcame him at the power of death and has released those who all their lifetime were subject to bondage. The good news is the devil's been defeated. And the even better news is we can overcome him. Be faithful unto death and I'll give you the crown of life. Revelation chapter 2 verse 10. Uh, Revelation 3 verse 21. He who overcomes, Jesus said, will sit with me on my throne in essence. And so as we think about ghosts, friend, the idea that we find today of ghosts coming back and haunting people, ghosts existing and living here, it's based on a wild imagination, not on Scripture. The Bible teaches that those events although may have happened on special occasions in the Bible, are not something that is regularly happening today. But here's what I do know. I need to be sure that the wicked one, the real evil one, the devil, is not ruling and reigning in my life. And the way I do that is by obedience to the gospel of Christ. Friend, we ask you today, have you heard the word of God? Romans 10 verse 17. Do you really believe Jesus is God's son? John 8, verse 24. Have you repented of things in your life that may not be right? Luke 13, verse 3. Would you confess Jesus as God's Son? Romans 10, verse 10. And would you be immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins? Mark 16, 16. Let's not get so caught up in ghosts that we forget about the real enemy. And let's remember, he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is taking the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we do and say. And unlike many other religious groups, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. He'll return like a thief in the night. And we encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form, or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111.